So today I was presented with a dilemma. AMD sent these boxes over and I already know what's in them. Threadripper 2. And they also said, hey, there is an unboxing embargo for these products, which means there's a date AMD is telling us reviewers we can unbox these products, show them off to you guys, but we can't test them. We can't show any performance numbers yet. And I was like, ah, like I have these conflicts about unboxing videos and their viability and usefulness. And is it just free advertising for the vendor? And of course, this is all to be blamed on Steve from Gamers Nexus, but ultimately I decided it. I'm gonna unbox these anyway. So here is my unboxing, a Threadripper 2, as well as whatever else is in these boxes. Excellent! The Thermaltake View 71 Snow Edition shows off your build-in style with a frosty white paint job and four tempered glass side panels. You also get two pre-installed 140mm ring white LED fans, a vertical GPU mount with bracket, and three-way radiator support for water cooling. So click the sponsor link in the description to learn more. Shall we begin? Actually, before the unboxing, let's get to some of the straight dirt on what Threadripper 2 actually is. Threadripper 2 is going to be split into two series of CPUs, the X series and the WX series. But both of them are based on 12 nanometers M plus architectures, the same stuff that Ryzen 2 that launched earlier this year is based on. So you have the X series of CPUs, which are slightly more mainstream at a price of $650 and $900 respectively for the 2920X and the 2950X, a 12 core and a 16 core, so a similar layout to what we already have this year with the 1920X and the 1950X, albeit at reduced prices and higher frequencies. So uh, that's pretty nice. Also, you get the benefits of uh, Ryzen 2. And then we have the WX series. This is what people were really drooling over after it was announced at Computex. The 2970 WX is a 24 core, 48 thread CPU for $1,300. 4.2 gigahertz turbo on this one and a three gigahertz base clock. And then the big daddy, the 2990 WX, 18 $1,500, 32 cores and 64 threads and a 4.2 gigahertz turbo frequency. That's pretty nice. And of course the WX series also based on 12 nanometers Zen plus ludicrous multi-threaded performance. And I do kind of like the heavy metal aesthetic that AMD is going for here with their marketing materials. Uh, I, I, I appreciate it. So those are the four CPUs. Uh, interesting that it doesn't seem like they're going with an eight core version this time around, which I'm okay with. And they are positioning the X series CPUs as for enthusiasts and gamers, whereas the WX series CPUs are for creators and innovators. Because really, if your main goal is gaming, you're not gonna get a whole lot of benefit out of 24 cores or 32 cores. Heck, even 16 cores, it's hard to argue for that. But this is for enthusiasts and people who wanna like game and stream at the same time, or use their computer for other tasks besides just playing games. Finally, here's a look at availability. The 2990WX will actually be coming soonest on August 13th, so that's available next week. August 31st is a launch date for the 2950X, and then in October, we should be seeing the 2970WX and the 2920X. One last date to point out, pre-orders go up for this today. So along with this video, and if I can find them, I'll put some links to where you can pre-order these in the description down below. So now we have a slightly better idea of what to expect with this launch. And speaking of expectations, I have already been informed that at least for this initial launch, I will not be receiving the 2990WX. Sad face, I know. How disappointing. But uh, I am making a pitch to grab one of those because I am very interested in integrating one into Riptide because Riptide totally deserves a 2990WX. If you guys agree, post a comment down in the comment section below. In the meantime though, look at all, look at all this stuff. And this here, and this Amarax thing here, that, whatever that is. There's lots of, it's like psycho cardboard packaging. And ooh, the updated Zenith Extreme. I'm gonna open this mysterious little white box first because it says not for retail sale and I honestly have no idea what this is. Here we have, oh, well, well there. Hey, that's not bad. I do believe this is my first 970 Evo. I have worked a decent amount with a 960 Evo. 970 is even faster. Uh, so thanks Samsung for including this in the kit. I will definitely be making use of this. Uh, really, really fast NVMe SSDs. Sorry. Next, the motherboard. Now, X399 is still the chipset, and there are not necessarily, there's not like a new chipset or a new socket for X399. There will be some new motherboards with some enhanced power delivery, but AMD was able to confirm that all of the existing X399 motherboards, they, they've checked with all the motherboard manufacturers, and since the TDP is increasing for these CPUs, the 12 and 16 core will still be 180 watt TDP, but the 24 and 32 cores will be 250 watt TDP, the power delivery to drive all those cores was kind of important, but every motherboard 
motherboard manufacturer said our existing X399 motherboards are okay for that. So the stock out of the box frequencies for the 2990WX, you will need a BIOS update, but you'll be able to pop it in and it will work even with a, an X399 motherboard that you maybe bought last year. That said, when it comes to overclocking, there is a case to be made for increased or enhanced power delivery, or at least giving a bit of a boost to the power delivery systems that are already there. So for some boards, like uh, what Asus has decided to do with the Zenith Extreme, I do believe this is a new revision of the motherboard, but there's not too many changes that have made them update the name or do a Mark II or anything like that. But this little kit uh, is something you can add on to it, and this will just provide some active cooling over the heatsink on the VRMs to keep that cool and make sure it's providing adequate power delivery to the CPU. Um, but of course, as the launch happens, I'm sure there's gonna be lots of different testing with different motherboards to see which is the ideal solution for overclocking. That said, the Zenith Extreme is still super badass, and there it is, and I've already shown you guys this motherboard before, so let's move on. You gotta have cooling with Threadripper, and I'm told that you will still get the bracket so that any existing Asetek based cooler can pop on there and does still work just fine for cooling. But if you wanna get special with it, maybe consider something like this from Enermax. This is the Liquitec TR42. So I don't know what they have done to change this and update it to make it version two. But I did use the first version of the Liquitec with my entry level Threadripper build last year. I thought it was a really solid cooler, uh, just from a visual perspective as well as the actual performance. It looks like they are maintaining that with this version two. It's got a nice sort of matte finish on the side with the Enermax logo. Maybe a little bit of texturing there as well. And it does this look like this pump block has been substantially updated. It is, it, it is even beefier than it was before. It's got the threader per mounts already pre-installed there. Huge copper contact plates. And then it does look like it's probably gonna light up maybe some RGB lights around the edge here uh, under this peely off bit with the Enermax logo. I'm not gonna take that off right now because uh, I don't wanna scuff it up. But there it is, the Enermax Liquitec TR42. Box number two. Everything couldn't fit in just one package. Here we go. All right, and I believe this is the somewhat more legitimate Threadripper unboxing experience here. I think, is this what I'm supposed to do? Fits in there so snugly. Aha. Uh -huh. AMD told me that their marketing crew is actually pretty excited about the box design that they did for the Threader for two unboxings. So I, I, I'm thinking this is pretty cool so far. Oh, there we go. Oh, it smells like, it smells like fresh foam. Like it smells good, but also kind of like maybe unhealthy. Oh, wow. So there it is, 2950X. Give you guys the 360 view. There's a big X on the box. That totally makes sense. Tucked in over here on the side, we have a Flare X memory kit. Oh, wait, wait for it, two. Which makes sense, quad channel memory, you would want four of these. Beyond that, we have our Threadripper 2950X packaging there. Let's see what else. Oh, more foam. It smells kind of like the paint you use on like models, like model cars back in the day that kind of make you feel lightheaded and woozy. Is AMD using some kind of special tricks here to give us a feeling of euphoria as we unbox the threader for that stuff? I don't know. I'm gonna save the CPU for last. Let's look in here. This, I believe, is a Wraith Ripper. Yeah. So Wraith Ripper is a 250 watt TDP air cooler that Cooler Master designs in collaboration with AMD specifically to cool Threadripper 2. And this thing is, oh my gosh, that is beastly. Wow. Uh, thermal paste. There's nothing protecting the pre-applied thermal paste here. It's on my fingers now. Uh, okay. So this is my first actual look at Wraith Ripper outside of photos. And um, it's a big old, air cooler, which is massive stacks of fins. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven heat pipes going from the base of this thing to the top. It's got a big old contact plate on the bottom with pre-applied thermal paste, as I have already discovered. And I can't tell for sure, but I think it might have like pass-throughs here so you can actually screw in, you know, to actually mount it. And of course, then you've got uh, RGB lighting that goes all the way across the top as well on this uh, sort of glossy pad. And what is this? This is a plug? Oh yeah, probably a plug to plug in and control that RGB lighting. So there's, there's Wraith Ripper. I'm, I'm impressed. It's heavy, like not insanely heavy, but it also feels fairly dense. Like it just feels like there's a lot going on in this space. Oh, there's, there's a, the fans in the middle too, like in the dead center of this thing. You can only barely see it. And now folks, the main event, the 2950X. And uh, I feel like there's some instructions here or something I should be following, but let's just, oh, look, there's a handle. 
this little handle to hold it on top. So I think I'm supposed to pull these little tabs off on the side like that. And then that lets me, aha, lift that up. Now I can actually see the processor. From there, uh, all right, this just lifts out like that. So I'm pretty sure for anyone who actually buys this, you're not gonna get this part. I think this was part of the reviewer's kit. This here is the actual box with the actual Threadripper, and we'll see if it's any more confusing than the old Threadripper was to unbox. They are at least maintaining the rip here functionality. I will, I will rip. Oh, it's ripping. Oh, I ripped too much. That better? Aha! Ripping that open has revealed a little tab underneath. I thought you were supposed to pull up on this tab, but you actually push it over to the side, and that releases the lid. So now we can lift the lid up, which is on a hinge, and that lets us look inside. There's a little box in here, so I'm gonna pull that out. It's kind of like Excalibur, like only the worthy can actually pull it from the stone. Oh, okay, all right, I just kind of lifted it out of there. So I will say for the first time opening this box, I do like that I didn't have to rip this completely, so it doesn't, it's not falling apart. I kind of retaped it on my last boxes so I could hold it. It's not the most practical box, but it is does look kind of cool. So if you want to keep it up on a shelf or something after you've got your system put together, I imagine you can. Uh, and I also imagine that I'm going to know what's included in here. Thread ripper sticker, a little bit more information, warranty info, case badge, and then here we have the thread ripper Ace Tech standard mounting bracket. So you have an if you have an existing Ace Tech all-in-one liquid cooler that uses that standard circular mount. You can use that for it and it will do a perfectly adequate job at keeping your Threadripper cool enough since it doesn't ship with a cooler in the box. And then of course you got this Threadripper mounting tool and this is for after you get the Threadripper CPU in the socket, you use this to tighten it down and this will specifically tighten it to a level of torque that's listed on the device here. So it kind of tighten it and then it snaps once it's done. It's also got the hex key uh, down there as well. And then last but not least, of course, the action Threadripper 2 2950X in its carrier frame. And there it is. I, I really just love how substantial and sizable these actual feel. I like that they have their own frame. I like the sort of slightly more advanced method for installing them. Uh, I've just been really happy with what AMD has done with Threadripper <laughs> starting last year in 2017 and now continuing it in 2018. So, but guys, that is gonna wrap it up for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have. Just doing a fun unboxing of new toys is always exciting, but if you did, hit the thumbs up button and of course subscribe to my YouTube channel because I will have a review on Threadripper 2, the 2950X at least, coming up very soon. Actually, August 13th is when we're actually able to post reviews on these, so expect it right around that time frame. Thanks again for watching guys and we'll see you next time.